So the goal of VMware Cloud Foundation is to deliver a public cloud-like experience within your data center. From a networking perspective, this vision is realized through the concept of a virtual private cloud or VPC. A VPC is a dedicated virtual environment where you can create subnets, allowing you to interconnect virtual machines. The VPC owner has full control over the connectivity between VMs. As its name suggests, the VPC is entirely virtual and has no dependency on the underlying physical network infrastructure. As a result, a VPC can be instantly instantiated with few clicks on a UI or uh, via API with automation. By default, VPCs don't have direct connectivity between each other. So how does this work? Of course, uh, the virtual machines run on ESXi hosts, and during VCF installation, they are configured with a dedicated interface for features like vMotion, vSAN, as well as NSX. Starting with VCF9, NSX is now integrated directly into the ESXi code base, and it's NSX that is responsible for creating the virtual networks backing VPC subnets. NSX instantiates a virtual router for VMs to communicate between subnets, as we can see here. So subnets are entirely virtual and are unknown to the physical infrastructure, so NSX also tunnels their traffic between ESXi hosts. All this is achieved behind the scenes by NSX with no specific configuration required. The application you deploy within your VPC will certainly require connectivity with the outside world. How is this achieved, considering that the subnets might be using private addresses? The traditional solution offered by NSX relies on service appliances called edge nodes. One key component is a transit gateway which routes traffic between VPCs and also to the outside world. The benefits of this solution is that peering with physical network devices is only required where the edge nodes are deployed, and the edge can also run additional advanced services. VCF9 introduces a new option where a distributed version of this transit gateway is instantiated on each ESXi host. With this model, there is no need to deploy edges and the traffic from VMs in VPCs can be routed directly to the physical infrastructure. Those benefits are achieved by connecting all the hosts to some common public network whose IP addresses will represent VMs externally. Here, for example, we're representing network 10.0.0.16 connected to all ESXi hosts. If a VM on host 1 requires external connectivity, it will be assigned an IP address in this 10.0.0.16 network. Most physical networks already provide the option to safely extend a subnet between racks. This is typically achieved with eVPN and VXLAN. In the following demo, we will show how this is set up directly from vCenter in VCF9. So this is a view of the vCenter UI. Notice that vCF9 introduces uh, new vCenter options for VPCs, VPC subnets, and network connectivity. We're going to set up network connectivity for our VPC first. So in this screen, we'll offer to select one of the two options we described earlier on, connectivity through centralized uh, transit gateway on edge or distributed transit gateway with no edge. We're going to select the second option. We're acknowledging the specific requirements for this option. And here we're prompted to specify the network defined in the physical infrastructure to which all the ESXi hosts are connected. So we enter a VLAN ID, a default gateway, and the size of the block the VPCs will be using to allocate their public addresses within this subnet. The last block, private transit gateway IP blocks, allows the transit gateway to allocate addresses routable between VPCs. And that's it. This is a one-time configuration. You can now start using VPC and, and we're going to create a simple VPC in order to illustrate that. It's just a matter of giving a name to the VPC, entering some IP blocks that will be used for its private addresses. And that's it. 
So now I have my VPC, I'm going to create two subnets within it. App subnet with enough space to all allocate 256 IP addresses. So it's basically a slash 24 subnet. And I'm also enabling a DHCP server here. Here you can see my subnet has been created. It was allocated subnet 172.16.0.0 slash 24, and this is taken from the private block we defined earlier on in the VPC. You can also see the IP address of the default gateway and the DHCP server. Now I'm going to create a web subnet using the same parameters, basically. Here you have a nice graphical representation of the VPC in the topology section. And finally, I'm going to attach one virtual machine to each of those subnets to test connectivity. So this is exactly the same procedure as attaching a VM to a DVPG. You'll notice that there is now a VPC subnet option when selecting a network. So web is attached to web subnet and uh, app VM is attached to app subnet. At that stage, you can see that my web VM has retrieved via DHCP an IP address in the subnet. The topology view also shows that each subnet now has a VM. So I want my web VM to be accessible from the outside world. I'm going to assign it an IP external address. This is achieved in a very simple way by selecting external IPs. So web was assigned IP address 10.0.0.2. This is directly taken from the block that we define in the beginning in the external connectivity section. So let's check that it works. From my workstation, I can ping the web VM address and I can log into it. Once inside, I can show the real address of WebVM, that's 172.16.1.3. So NSX has automatically translated 10.0.0.2 to this internal address in order to provide connectivity from the outside world. WebVM is on the VPC, so it can reach the AppVM via its private address. So I'm connecting to AppVM and um, I'm showing that I have connectivity between my subnets thanks to NSX virtual routing and switching included in VCF9.